anytime that you see a rocket ship, and I'll go to studio offer, anytime you see a rocket ship on any parts of the Libriverse, that when you click on it will open up the launch pad. And the launch pad is this thing right here. Yeah. So if the comments and conductor is your portal to the Libriverse, the launch pad is your map. It shows you everything that you have access to uh, and everything that we have available for the end user in order to capitalize on. So we have our applications right up here in the beginning, Adapt, Commons and Conductor, Jupiter, like I mentioned before, Nova, that content management system, and Studio right here. Uh, these things are still being coupled into a single sign-on system. That single account that you use to uh, register for will be used across all the platforms here. Uh, right now it's used for comments and conductor and the libraries, but these other ones will be updated very soon. We have people, the, the team on studio will be updating it very, very soon and adapt will probably be within the next month if uh, pending, uh, issues, but nonetheless, it gives you an idea in order to look at here, the 18 libraries I talked about before, including the Spanish library that we mentioned here, um, the Kranskia library down here, uh, and the global library. And those are the three language libraries. And then everything else is field specific, you know, whether it's more narrow, like scope, uh, like chemistry, or it's a little bit broad, like humanities. It's still meant to be a centralized infrastructure to maintain these, uh, these things in an organized fashion. And you can click on any of these, these things in order to be able to access it. Um, and you'll find again, the, um, that, uh, launch pad icon, uh, on most, but not all right now, but eventually on all applications uh, in the Libreverse. It's meant again to be the map that's going off of here. So um, let me drop the studio because that's not what I want to do. I'm going to click on Commons and Conductor and it opens up the Commons and Conductor. Now remember I mentioned that Commons and Conductor has the main one uh, Commons instance that we run ourselves uh, for on the Libretex project. And then it has a whole bunch of campus commons when the campus actually is part of a um, of the LibreNet uh, infrastructure that's out there. So um, this is the front end uh, for it. It gives a random set of 12 books um, that are compiled. So that means that they're complete and added into our infrastructure. <laughs> if I were to refresh this page, it will, ref it will reflect it. This number is still a little bit lower than what the true number is for a handful of reasons, uh, but uh, we are working on uh, rapidly expanding that because we have a lot more in our repository than, than what that number is there. Uh, and right now this is doing a search through the central bookshelves and the campus bookshelves. Remember the ones that we centralize, uh, remember that we curate ourselves, we meaning the Libre Text team, and the campus bookshelves are the ones that individual campuses uh, have um, uh, out there. I can click on these things uh, and then look only through campus bookshelves, which are typically organized around specific campuses, uh, or sorry, specific courses, whilst the books uh, that are in the central bookshelves um, are just generally named uh, for general use uh, purposes. So, okay. Um, that's the front end. It has a search infrastructure right here. You can do a search uh, off of it. And that's almost everything. The exception would be the ability in order to look at collections. So these are partners that we've, um, um, or organizations that we've, uh, uh, provide a mechanism in order to showcase their books, something like a, a library guide uh, around specific collections. Those could be around specific fields or things that we want to be able to build something like that uh, out there. Um, we have a search through the homework in the ADAPT infrastructure that's there. Some of them need to have some uh, updated on the um, on the description off of here. So we have 119 public courses that you can uh, take a look and view. This it shouldn't say necessarily view assignments, uh, but it's this right here gives you ability in order to view these things anonymously and you don't see the solution off of them. It doesn't interact. So you can act like as a topical question bank, but not as a uh, solution uh, guide for them. And that's only for some of the courses, not, not for all by any stretch of the imagination. And lastly, um, the under development, which we need to expand a little bit, gives you the ability in, in order to look at other books that are out here. My dog is whining uncontrollably, so I need to open the door. Hold on one moment here. Come on, Derby.
sorry about that. So, uh, so you can look and see uh, who's making something uh, on different sources. The intent off of here is to facilitate the community uh, so that you have effective sharing. Uh, and more importantly, you can make it so you don't have to replicate this wheel. Uh, if you're building a resource that someone else is building it, uh, there's no reason to uh, not work together in order to make it easier if that's out there. Uh, so, okay. With that being said, uh, we will uh, do that. There was a question coming here. Are harvesting and under development the same? So under development means that there's a project that has been created that hasn't been compiled, which means it's not complete. Um, the harvesting is our process of taking existing OER and bring it into our platform. So certainly there's a time where when we harvest existing thing, like let's say OpenStax just came out with an organic chemistry book by McMurray. Uh, so we harvested that. And during the period of time that we were harvesting it uh, uh, and, and pruning it and cleaning it up and making it standardized, uh, uh, that process, it was under development. But at the point that we published it, or, or compiled it, uh, which is part of the publishing process, then it transitioned into a proper uh, project that's out there. Uh, so they're not uh, synonymous, but they are uh, sometimes overlapping. Uh, so in this case here, you can go and say, okay, well, here is somebody, um, in this case here, it's, it's one of my projects, and this is, har this is a harvesting project <laughs> that we haven't brought in. in. This case here is probably from um, some, macroeconomics book uh, from um, the linked from the open textbook library. And then the team is bringing in and, and harvesting. It actually looks like they have already harvested the initial part Then I need to go in and do cleanup. I do well, it doesn't, that's actually interesting. I'm not sure. Something on my, my app. So I'm going to skip that uh, for now, let you guys play around with that. What's more interesting is the, uh, it's not the, Commons uh, interface is the conductor, the back end. So if you click on this button right here, actually, uh, you'll go to the conductor. I will also mention these are campuses that are all part of the uh, conductor page. Actually, I need to make an extension off of here. Um, and these are a few additional things that uh, I have in order to verify requests and things like that. So anyways, go to the conductor. That's the project management tool. Um, Right now, uh, you don't need to build a project in Conductor in order to build a book. That will change in the next few weeks, months-ish. So that before anyone builds a book, they need to build a project page that then is used as the interface in order to build a book. That makes it easier for us to, in order to keep track of what people are doing. Uh, and it also provides an infrastructure in order to uh, identify and classify things in a more coherent manner that's out there. Uh, so... Um, Bill asked a question, describe cleanup tasks when bringing in new text or materials. Um, so I use the term cleanup uh, as, uh, as a standardization. So uh, the actual tasks involved in cleaning up depends upon uh, the source material and the nature of the material that come in. For example, if we were harvesting a PDF of uh, math-based questions. Those equations that are in that book need to be converted to math jacks or LaTeX that then is then shown math jacks. And we have to do that by a equation by equation, expression by expression basis. So it can be a very slow, painful process in order to be able to do. Uh, <laughs> the same thing happens if uh, we bring in something and it doesn't have good accessibility. Uh, which is oftentimes the case across the board, we need to start to implement accessibility protocols, change it so that the things are standardized uh, correctly in order to, and that like, there's a range of different issues uh, for accessibility that's not done, uh, that's off of there. Um, and there are a few other things that uh, I'll talk about probably more tomorrow when we actually look at the editing than what we're going to be talking about today. Um, but it's a range of different tasks and things like that. Um, if you're interested, I could show you more of that process. Uh, I have a student team in order to facilitate that. Um, but uh, invariably, it does require a little bit of uh, review afterwards in order to make sure that everything is up to snuff. So anyways, back to the conductor. So this is the conductor page. Uh, you guys probably only have one entry here, which is the uh, the Oktoberfest meeting. Because uh, that right there is a conductor page, uh, conductor page dealing with a 
conference or a workshop, not dealing with building a book, uh, but we use these things for a wide variety of different uh, uh, tasks that's out there. So for example, I'm not going to go to the Oktoberfest, but I will mention that I have a lot of content out here that are a lot of projects or conductor pages that are uh, pinned. So in other words, I pin them up here for me to be able to review uh, and at some point be able to get rid of. There are so many of them here. Uh, I need to start cutting through them in order to make sure that I can close them out. And then below that, I have the recently edited projects. Those are projects that I have as a member been in and did something, whether it's making a comment or making a um or uploading a file or something along those lines that's there. <laughs> so uh, let me look at something. I'm going to grab this beginning uh, advanced uh, healthcare uh, Spanish OER man, just because it's a convenient one uh, for me. And I'm not sure if any of the authors are, are here, but uh, please forgive me if I say anything wrong. So again, this right here is designed as a project management tool. It's designed in order to facilitate team uh, construction of content. It's also designed as a mechanism, even if you have individual ways, individuals building projects in order to standardize what projects they're doing. Uh, or in our case, like what Bill uh, was sort of discussing, harvesting efforts that may inquire, uh, require a bit more advanced um, organizational skills. So this is a conductor page. Uh, a, you can always make a new conductor page on the front. I'm using an existing one. Uh, <laughs> it has these general project information things right here that is useful in order to give a rough idea about the status of things that are uh, off of here. And then uh, when I actually make the page, I'm processing a series of questions here, including um, the status of the page, whether it's available, uh, a project or it's completed, what type of project it happens to be, if I want it to be a public or private project that I'm able to do a search through. Uh, those are all pretty straightforward things that are similar to most learning management systems that are out there. Um, you apply um, project tags. That makes it easier in order to do searches through projects and organize those things effectively. In California, we have a thing called CID, course ID number, which is convenient in order to standardize courses across multiple uh typically community colleges, although the Cal State University system uses it a little bit and the University of uh, California, I think, does it like almost never. <laughs> uh, so um, uh, so that, that's empty, but you can take a look and say these are different codes for different components uh, in the CID. Um, and you can hook up a homework system off of it uh, and you can provide information if you want, if it's a harvesting project, for example, uh, where the author's details are, you know, what, and the licensing and things like that that comes in uh, for that. And then individual notes. This is not overly surprising, not overly uh, <clears throat> difficult in order to master, but it gives you a general overview of the, the starting point of these things. The lead member has the ability in order to add people to the project. Um, and when you're in the project, then you're able to obviously view the project. And then from that, you're able to uh, update and use it effectively, uh, which will be in a moment. Individuals can have different statuses, whether they're a team member or they are a project liaison, which means they're more of an auditor based uh, individual or they're a member where they're active off of that. Um, and those are the four topics that we uh, member, lead, liaison, team member. Uh, I don't know why there's two there and project auditor that they have. That's fine. Um, so you get people in here, you're able to organize the, the teams. You can look at all the members. That, so we have about eight to nine members uh, on this team. Um, and then you can start to look at a conversation behind them dealing with whether in this here, talking about 3D uh, anatomy applications, uh, talking about progress at different stages, talking about uh, various threads. This is like a forum of sorts. Uh, and uh, this thing, when you write them down, sends an email out, not too dissimilar to the emails that you got multiple times uh, from this workshop. <laughs> uh, this has been very productive for us, LibreText development team, uh, because this is our preferred mechanism to work with projects that are specific, work with questions that are project specific. Uh, because I can come in or someone else on my team can come in and get a big picture about what the state of affairs is for that project. And it's much harder for someone to have to explain the nature of the project in an email that we can just get very clearly from looking at the, the project development team. 
Uh, <clears throat> you have the ability to upload files. In this case here, you can even upload uh, test banks or other things that are, uh, there's right here, there's empty in this directory or PowerPoint presentations or other things. You can decide if you want people to see it, if you want only verified instructors to see it, or if you want only, uh, uh, only people in the uh, project team to be able to see uh, that. So it's a mechanism that you don't need to uh, share broadly, but you can have a more targeted infrastructure. This is going to be expanded very soon, uh, thanks to the state of California, as far as a project that they have for the California Education Learning Lab, that we can apply metadata to here, and it provides a mechanism in order to be able to do more effective searches in order to find things. Like if you want to find a specific uh, PowerPoint file dealing with calculus, uh, or more specifically, limits of calculus. Uh, and if that's uh, targeted properly, you're able to do a search uh, off of there. Uh, tasks then gives you the opportunity in order to make uh, sort of mini sub projects. Uh, uh, in this case here, this is dealing with a specific task. These tasks are, for this project, are designed in order to be uh, chapter-wise uh, level. Uh, and uh, but you don't need to do that. You can organize it in a variety of other uh, ways. And uh, then in this case here, these are subtasks, uh, and you're able to have communications. There's no communication involved in here. Um, once you've actually have that, you can actually present that in a uh, in a Gantt plot perspective, if that's convenient for you in terms of organizing these things, or as a calendar view in order to emphasize specific deadlines and such that you want to be able to uh, to do this there. Um, again, this is a project management tool. Uh, it's not at the same level as what the project management tools are used for coding uh, projects, but it's a very convenient general purpose uh, OER based project management tool. Um, I will mention a few things up here. We had the managed team where you can add and remove uh, individuals. We have the timeline, which is essentially the infrastructure I showed at this point. Then we have peer review. So you can establish a peer review or you can adopt an existing peer review for your resource. And that provides a mechanism for uh, individuals to sign in and be able to give feedback for the book um, that is there or the resource. So it doesn't have to be a book. Um, that then keeps it in the central database. You can always go back and review it. One of the key or one of the pet peeves I have about other reviewing uh, infrastructure is that uh, if the review is useful, the authors can update their book and are subject to the review. And then the review no longer has the same utility as it did when it was applicable. So you need to be able to curate the reviews. And this is a mechanism in order to facilitate that. And as a review comes in, then all the authors on the project get notified of that. Accessibility. Uh, the accessibility infrastructure uh, it provides a mechanism in order to help to address the WCAG uh, comp uh, compliance infrastructure. That's based off of what we call an accessibility compliance review matrix, which is a little mini matrix that gives you an overview of the book, chapter or page by page, and then identifying the criteria necessary to be successful in what's called an ACR or built from what's called a VPAT, if that's a term that you've heard before. Uh, this is typically overkill uh, for a book, but it does provide a mechanism in order to ensure complete uh, uh, compliance for WCAG. This right here will eventually um, be mirrored in the book itself. Uh, we just need to do a few tweaks in order to be able to, uh, to do that. So, um, <clears throat> These are all very powerful things, uh, but these are useful things in order to build OER. We knew that because again, we're practitioners uh, and we're very happy with how things have evolved with here and uh, more importantly, uh, where they're going in our current development of the Commons Conductor. What's gonna be done, what's gonna be implemented soon, and I apologize for this uh, because uh, you're going to be seeing things separate off of this. Many of the individual technologies that we're going to uh, look at, and one of them is going to be the remixer, which I talked about in the previous presentation, will be merged into this project page. So in other words, anyone who has access to that book, that project, will then be able to access the remixer here and uh, deal with it in this case, instead of dealing with it directly on the library uh, <clears throat> and a few other uh, features off of here. Uh, when we actually have that in place, this will be an exceedingly powerful technology and approach in order to be able to handle um, 
uh, curating, building, um, and distributing of OER content. Uh, I'm going to skip over the analytics infrastructure. Um, because we have an error <laughs> and we haven't used it much um, uh, <clears throat> and we're updating it uh, as I mentioned before. So um, that is generally what a project is and that's what most of what people use the commons a conductor uh, system for. So let me go to the front page again. I think there were a few questions in the chat um, or do I need to address anything Jennifer in the chat? Is Jennifer still here? Yeah, she's still here. Okay, I'm going to presume that the questions that were in the chat were addressed. Uh, if not, please uh, step up. So, uh, okay. Can I just ask you to repeat something? Sure, yes. You mentioned at the beginning of this kind of walkthrough that currently two things live apart <laughs> and you're moving towards um, maybe forcing everyone to use kind of the project management. What What is separate from the kind of like the project it'll make, it'll, that well, is going to be. Let me let me go to a book, like the chemistry book. So when you actually go to a a library, um, there are a handful of technologies that you have access to uh, right here, including you know attribution, source, remixer, things like that that we're going to be uh, dealing with. These things don't exist in the conductor. They exist as separate code that's part of the library. Yeah. The, we're going to be folding those into the conductor so that when you, let's say you have a book and you want to remix it, which we're going to be dealing with very soon, uh, you go to your conductor page and you say, okay, I want to remix this book. This is the book. And then I remix it here. Uh, it, it's just going to be rearranging things a little bit uh, and force people in order to use the conductor as the primary mechanism for organizing uh, these things. Uh, if you're familiar with Pressbooks, Pressbooks has sort of a back page. Um, it's something like that, that you can organize your pages and things in, in this manner. We just did it in a very different approach, and now we're starting to standardize it a bit um, in a different way. Uh, but you, you'll know more about that as it evolves. There's not going to be anything new. It's just going to be where things are uh, that will be out there. Um, and we won't uh, we won't hide things from you guys. Um, at least I won't hide anything from you guys. I don't know about Jennifer. I don't trust her that much. I can edit that out, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, so um, any other questions, concerns? Okay. Uh, so that's the Commons Conductor. It's an exceedingly powerful tool. Uh, I encourage you to use it. Uh, and like I said, soon is going to be the only way that you're going to be able to use these other components of the, the Libreverse. There are a few other things that are available out here. Unfortunately, I'm signed in as um, as me instead of the demo account. Uh, so there's a few additional features that uh, you don't have access to. Um, I will mention the My Alert system. So this gives me the ability to come in and create something like calculus. And if I want to get a um, any project book or homework that uses the word calculus in their search criteria, the title, metadata, and such like that, I will then uh, be informed of. I'll get an email telling me that's on it. So if there's a specific field that I want to be able to focus on, for example, if Spanish as a second language is particularly interesting to you, you teach of that and you want to know if any resource that comes in that could be useful to you, you can pop that down and just write down Spanish uh, and it it should work uh, and it will work. I'm gonna delete that alert. Uh, <clears throat> harvesting request. And so this is uh, dovetails into, into what uh, Bill asked for. If you have an existing OER and you want to bring it into our platform, uh, this is the way that we uh, centralize that request order uh, where someone comes in and just basically says, this is the title of the library where we think it goes, the URL, the source that's off of there, a little bit information about um, if you're part of the LibreNet, you get a priority harvesting uh, and it puts into our queue and then we address it when we can, uh, unless a campus decides they actually want to 
pay for the students in order to be able to harvest um, on a much faster time scale than what our general queue is able to do. Um, and then that's the way you, you request those things. We harvest uh, all the time from various places, uh, irrespective of any requests that are out there um, as necessary. For example, any OpenStax books come out, we actually start to harvest it directly uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, or the vast majority of OpenStax uh, or not OpenStax press books sometimes um, uh, if things are, looks like they're just remixes of content and they don't bring anything to our collection, uh, we don't typically uh, harvest them unless it's a request from a LibreNet because the campus already has an existing press books uh, uh, book that they want to bring in. Um, so I digress a little bit. Uh, adoption reports gives a mechanism for people to provide adoption information on a book, self-registration or self-adoption that's there. Um, uh, we'll forget that and, and the, that link and going to leave it right there. So that is the comments of conductor uh, in a nutshell. Uh, I encourage you to play around with it. Take a look at it, though. It's going to be changing, growing uh, as uh, time evolves. For example, forums will be up here very soon. So you can start to see existing forums um, that you can sign up for um, and be part of, uh, including the curation board um, and and other uh, other communities of practice.